Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, let's start. We are continuing with cables. So if you remember in the last class, and with, this was with reference with suspension bridges, we said that if you take any cable in which the loading is uniformly distributed along the projected plan as in the case of a suspension bridge and if the two supports are at the same level then it's very easy to get the support reactions first the total load will be shared equally in the vertical direction so if the distributed load is Q0 and the length is L1, each of the two vertical reactions will be Q0 into L1 by 2. And how do we get the horizontal reaction? How do we get the horizontal reaction in a cable? Yes, in general, by invoking another equation. What is that equation? What is the equation? No, no. You need one more equation. What is that equation? Not moment equilibrium. Moment equilibrium is always applicable in all uh, bodies in a state of static equilibrium. No. What is the additional equation that you get? Which you won't get in a frame normally. What is that additional equation? That additional equation comes from the basic assumption in, in uh, cables. We are assuming that the cable is perfectly flexible, which means it can take only, like a thread, it can take only axial tension, it cannot take any axial compression, it cannot take any bending moment, no shear force. So, you don't forget this. One powerful equation you get in a cable, which you do not get in a frame or in an arch, is that the bending moment at any location in the cable is zero. That's a very powerful equation. It's not the same as moment equilibrium. Moment equilibrium is always satisfied. That's for the overall free body. Here, if you cut a section of the cable at every location, the bending moment is zero. How does that equation help us? One, that equation will help us get the horizontal reaction. How? Well, if you know the sag in the cable, the maximum uh, is here at the mid span, and let's say the sag is H, then if the then the cable has to be perfectly horizontal here and if you cut a section here the uh, you have to satisfy you, you have to satisfy moment equilibrium of that segment invoking the fact that mo is zero if mo is not zero you can still invoke moment equilibrium. But you don't know what that moment is. The moment is zero. Now the moment is zero, and we gave a simple argument to this. Supposing this structure did not have any horizontal reaction, like in the case of a simply supported beam. Then a simply supported beam subject to gravity loading will be subject to sagging bending. And the bending moment is maximum at the mid span, which is equal to W L squared by 8. In this case, Q, Q naught L squared by 8, L1 squared by 8, right? Now, somehow, 
uh, that is getting completely eliminated by an equal and opposite moment, a hogging moment. The hogging moment is generated by the fact that you have a horizontal reaction here which is transmitted throughout the cable as a horizontal component of the tension in the cable and the fact that there is a level difference between this horizontal reaction at the support and the horizontal reaction at any other location generates a couple which induces an equal and opposite bend, which induces a hogging bending moment with reference to your simply supported beam that cancels your sagging bending moment. So if your hogging moment here, if your sagging moment here in the equivalent simply supported beam is Q0 L squared by 8, then capital H, in this case H1, into small h is the couple that you have must be equal to that and so it's very easy find out the free bending moment here and just divide it by the sag that's that's how fast you do it that's how suspension bridges were built in the early days no big calculations got it now the actual tension in the cable keeps changing from this point to this point it is maximum at the support and minimum at the lowest point the tension in the cable is the resultant of the vertical component of the tension and the horizontal component of the tension. Now the horizontal component of the tension is constant and given by the support reaction in the horizontal direction. There is a name for it. It is called horizontal tension. In an arch, it is called horizontal thrust because it is in the opposite direction. So it is a resultant of the vertical and the horizontal and obviously that resultant value is going to change from here to here and it is going to be zero here. Now the vertical component can be also linked to the shear force in an equivalent simply supported beam. Just like you consider the bending moment here and divided by the sag, you can talk of shear force. The shear force in a beam is maximum at the support and zero here, right? And it's going to vary linearly if the loading is uniformly distributed. Correct? So, uh, at this location, you don't have a vertical component. You have only a horizontal component. At this location, at any other location, you do have a vertical component, which is given by the shear. Now, we all know about the shear, how to calculate it. And that also... I asked this question, what is the use of knowing that the bending moment at any location is zero? Which comes from the assumption that the cable is perfectly flexible. How does that help, help uh, us in cable, in understanding cables? You must give me the correct answer. Okay, we got the horizontal reaction. Next, it also gives us, uh, it gives us a cable profile. The entire geometry of the cable is dictated by the fact that the bending moment at every location is zero. So if you know the bending moment in a simply supported beam with the same loading, in this case, you know, uh, it is parabolic. Then at every location in the cable, the level difference, you can say the sag, must be of such magnitude that the couple generated, capital H into small y, should neutralize the m naught x, which is the sagging minimum. Got it? In other words, the profile of the cable will look like the bending moment diagram. That's what we learned. It will look exactly like the bending moment diagram. And if you know the ordinate at any one point, you know everything. So if the bending moment diagram in a simply support beam subject to a UDL is parabolic, so will the cable profile be. And 
we've done this be before and you can prove that y, y is uh, any ordinate or if you choose, if you choose your origin at the lowest point then y is upward and you can say that this equation will be always a parabola and it will be y is proportional to x squared y is equal to ax squared is a simple formula which satisfies the boundary conditions what are the boundary conditions that at x equal to 0 y is 0 and at x equal to 0 y dash is 0 otherwise you will write y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c b and c are 0 because of the choice of the origin so it's a very simple equation and you can prove that that constant of proportionality is q0 by 2h we've done this before if you take the second derivative it becomes q0 divided by h which is a constant which is 8h by l squared okay so we've studied this and if you remember in the last class we raised this question what happens if you double the sag what happens let's say l1 is l2 well you'll find that it's the same equation if you had two necklaces one of this length another of this length and you superimpose this small necklace here you'll find it's it's, it's going to fit in exactly there why because everything is linked to q0 q0 is the same for both assuming q0 is the same and h is going to be the same and so you can prove that this will be a constant and uh, you can prove that if you double the small h double the sag then the ratio of l2 to l1 will be such that it has to f satisfy this geometry so l2 will be root 2 times l1 this could be a possible gate exam question multiple choice what is the ratio of l2 to l1 so they can give all options 2 times 4 times root 2 times none of the above root 2 times for that you should know this all right so there's a proof for this but basically it's because the equation is the same and capital h which is q0 by y double dash always remains unchanged and there's a formula for the length of the cable with this we know all the properties of a, a cable a standard cable assuming that the loading is distributed uniformly along the horizontal span okay so we know this let's now play with this let's say the cable is now unsymmetric which means that the two supports are at two different levels either b is above a or b is below a doesn't matter how does it change things let's see if you remember we studied this with reference to concentrated loads in a cable where the cable profile is piecewise linear now let's say the lowest point is here and let's define the sag h as that difference in elevation between the lowest point and the straight line joining the two supports that straight line is referred to as a chord chord and so if you say that with reference to o the left support is at a height h1 and the right support is at a height h2 and the left distance is l1 and the right distance is l2 can we develop some relationships yes we can remember the master key the master key is this thing can always fit into this because q0 is the same if assuming q0 is the same so first of all you can say the reaction here is always going to be q0 l1 why why is this reaction vertical reaction here q0 l1 anyone simple answer 
and the reaction here is Q0 L2. How can we say that? The total load is Q0 into L1 plus L2. It is shared in this ratio. How can we say that so confidently? Yes? It's not difficult. Very simple answer. If I tell you the answer, <laughs> you remember when Christopher Columbus discovered America and he came back. Uh, seeing people said, okay, big deal, anyone could have done that. Then just to tease them, he said, how will you make an egg stand on its end? Remember that story? And uh, they all tried, whatever they did, the egg was... So he did a small trick. What was the trick he did? You don't remember. He pierced the egg and removed its contents and then you could show that it could stand. So, something like that. Similarly, if I tell you, you will say, oh, we also know. Well, I will tell you to drive in the point to ask you why you couldn't answer it. Not only you should know it, you should be able to express it so that tomorrow when you are teaching a class, you, the students should feel convinced or if you are actually practicing as an engineer, the client should be able to understand. It's not difficult. Remember, I kept telling you that there is something called cable tension. And the cable tension is always the resultant of the horizontal component, which is constant everywhere, and the vertical component. Yes or no? Remember, square root of S squared plus V squared. And that's why the cable tension is changing. That's why the angle of inclination is changing. Agreed? Now, if you cut a free body here and look at only this half, then in the free body here, when you cut the section here, you have only a horizontal reaction. You don't have a bending moment because bending moment is zero everywhere. You don't have a vertical component. That's the answer. And you have this external load Q0 into L1 ha acting here. Who's going to balance it? You can't get a reaction here. It has to come entirely here. Can't you think like that? We are not asking difficult things. This is the skill that you should get. It's so easy. Is it clear? It doesn't come from memory. It comes from seeing free bodies in your mind all the time. Likewise, if you take the right half, you know very well why this is Q0 into L2. Next question. Can you get an expression for H, capital H? There are many answers possible. Can you give me all the answers? What is capital H? I know some of you are attending this course just a, for the joy of learning simple stuff. They are not different. And B, uh, for really understanding simple things that you had already learned but did not fully digest. Yes or no? <coughs> you may never teach this course. It doesn't matter. But it clears some cobwebs in your brain. And the same cobwebs operate in all circumstances in life. Okay. So, tell me. Capital H. Looking at this free body, can you give me an expression for capital H? What is it? Or let me make your life easier. Let me take a pair of mental scissors and truncate it here at the same and say and throw away this and put B here. What will be the span of this then? What will it be? 2L1. If you, and what will be the capital H in that 2L1 fellow? 
there you are. You don't have to do all that. The same free body that we use to get this equal to Q0 L1 can be used to get the capital H also. No. Because the bending moment here is zero. Yes or no? So what is the answer? And similarly you can do it on this side. So this capital H, the equation is the same. Parabola. Equation is the same. Okay, and you can write it in this way and capital H can be written this way from the equation. But more important, by using the left half you will get this equation and using the right, it's not a half really, left part and the right part, you will get this. And obviously both have to be equal. Yes or no? That's it. Now, Let's say you are interested in knowing some more features. Let's take the midpoint of this cable. What's the midpoint in terms of length? If you take L1 plus L2, that's a total span. Take half of that L by 2. Let's call that location C. That won't be the lowest location. But it's interesting to know what that C is because HC will be the sag then. Remember the earlier equation we developed? So you know from basics that capital H will be Q0 L squared 8 HC. Remember this, we studied this in, in right in the beginning when we compared cables at two levels and at two different levels for concentrated loads. The same sag, you will get this HC. And you can find the um, force at any location and the slope at any location using this formula which is well known. Now let's go deeper into this. Let's say this point C which is at the middle of AB in, in terms of L by 2 is eccentric to the lowest point O by E. Can we develop an expression for E which may be helpful? Yes we can. I'm not going through the, through the proof because you can always develop it. And we can also develop the level difference between the midpoint and the lowest point YC. So I'll give you the expression. You can develop them yourself. There, this comes from the fact that capital H is the same. And you can, you know, you can play games with this. And if this is true, then this is true. And this is true. And then this is true. So you can write, and this is very interesting, L1 is L into a function of H1 and H2. L2 is L into a function of H2 and H2. This is, uh, I remember when we wrote the JE entrance exam and all, we used to get some silly questions like this. You have to play around, juggle around with this. But uh, these can be generated. I'm not saying you should memorize any of these. I don't like to remember these. And we'll solve a problem where you don't need to use these. But I notice that people who have these, sometimes students use these formulas and get the same answer. So we'll do a problem where you have a loading like this and I ask you to find H1 and H2. So you can substitute, you have a general equation for the cable, which is this. If you put X equal to E, you should get YC, right? And so you already have a relationship between YC and E. But if you put x equal to L2, then YB is H2. So you have another relationship. And so you have a relationship between YB and YC and delta. See, that's another interesting thing. If the level difference between A and B is delta, then the level difference between the, you know, the chord point here will be delta by 2 because of similar triangles. And then you can see that HC plus delta by 2 plus YC must add up to H2 by simple geometry. So you can play some games like that. Here, that's given here. And you finally end up with a very useful relationship. E by L is delta by 8HC. It's a powerful property of any cable. If you are given a cable which is unsymmetric, and if you know the sag at the mid-span with reference to the chord, 
and you also know the level difference between A and B, then, and you also know the span L, then the ratio of E by L, E to L, is given by this level difference delta divided by 8HC. So very useful equation which you can derive from first principles. Okay, that's just by the way. I'm, here we are not going to spend time in uh, doing all this. And then, uh, how, to, okay, let me ask, how to get the actual length of the cable? Finally, you have to order the cable. You have to pay money. You don't want to pay more than what's needed. How do you get the length of the cable? Anybody? You already know the equation for the length of a symmetric cable. Can we use that? Yes or no? Yes. How? That's right. You imagine you have a cable only up to here. You know the length of that? Divide by 2, you'll get the length of this. Imagine you have a cable longer like that. You know the length of that? Divide by 2, you'll get this part. That's all you have to do. So this is the first part, and this is the second part, and you can simplify. So this is the length of an unsymmetric parabolic cable. Okay. All right, to sum up all the equations. Okay, so these are the different equations. Now let's do a problem. And you have a choice of using those equations, which I strongly recommend not to, or using your brain. Because you will never remember the equation after some time. In your old age, like now, you don't remember anything. Only thing you remember is WL squared by 8. You will never forget. That's enough. With WL squared by 8, you can solve any problem. All right. Take this question. You have an unsymmetric cable. It is subject to, a cable is suspended between 2.75 meter apart horizontally with its left end lower than the right end by 10 meters. So this figure won't be given to you. You'll have to draw it. Left end is lower than right end. So delta is 10 meters. The cable supports a uniformly distributed load of 5 kN per meter along the horizontal span, Q0. Given that the central sag is 7.5 meter, which means with respect to the cord, you have to find all the relevant points. Find out the position of the lowest point. Will you give it a shot? Find out the position of the lowest point. In other words, find out L1 and L2. L1 and L2 is not given to you. Find out the horizontal tension. Find out the length of the cable. And find out the cable tensions at the two ends. Very simple. Can you tell me what is L1 or L2? One of the two. And the question is, always good examiners want you to do calculation without using any calculator. So they are simple answers. Tell me. What is L1 and what is L2? Just using your brain, no memory. I'll give you a clue. Supposing you had the same thing with both supports at the same level. You know the answer? Yes or no? Use that and crack it. Anyone? Okay, I can't wait. Well, draw the reactions. Okay, this, you know, is Q0 into L1, this is Q0 into L2, and this is H. Right? At least, can you tell me what's the value of H? Capital H. You are given the central sag. You are given the total span. Okay, 
Now, this is the formula way of doing it, which I don't recommend. Remember in the previous slide, I told you there are, you can use these formulas and do this, but let's not use these formulas. Let's use common sense. Well, capital H is Q0 L squared by 8 HC. I told you if you bring it back to the same level, you should be, have got this fast. Capital H you should get because Q0 is given, L is given, small h C is given, right? It's the same horizontal tension whether it's unsymmetrical or symmetrical provided the span is the same and the loading is the same. Got it? Then knowing this, H is given, then using this H, can you get VA and VB? How? How will you get VA and VB? How will you get VA and VB? Yes, cut a section at O and Bending moment here is zero. Equilibrium condition. So, can you get? Do you understand how to get V A V B? Once you have V A V B, L one is V A divided by Q naught. L two is V B divided by Q naught. Much faster way to do this, but the formula also gives you the same. Is it clear? So that takes care of uh, the position of the lowest point L one or L two. Both you can get. Now, you have the equation of the cable, you have, and use the equation of the cable to plug in uh, what is H1 and watch it, what is H2, this is one way of doing it, okay. And then the length of the cable from the previous formula, taking this half and this half, you can work out what the length is. The cable tensions are the, at the two ends. You know the vertical reaction, you know the horizontal reaction, two ends. That's all, simple question. Generally, you'll have symmetric cable. So we'll come to the next topic of how in the olden days they did simple, quick analysis of suspension bridges, which you today you maybe need to, needed to do. In your village, if you go, they want a pedestrian bridge, Lakshman Jhula. Can you do it on your own? Oh, sir, I don't have book, I don't have computer. No, you must be able to do it. Okay, so let's do it. Now, it's important to know uh, that these supports are tricky. This is called a pylon. And uh, the whole uh, thing about the suspension bridge is you want all the loading to be taken by the cable which means you don't want the girder there, the truss or whatever. The two. Usually you will have something like this with a girder here, girder there. This is the deck on which people will walk or there is a highway. Got it? Now, normally if you did not have the cable, this is a large span and the depth of this will be around span by 10, span by 12, which is huge. You don't want that. You don't want this fellow to take any load. You want all the load to be picked up through the suspenders and passed on to the cable. Right? And let's say the loading is uniformly distributed. Let's make first hunch. Let's be uniformly distributed. If the loading is uniformly distributed, what's the shape of this cable? It is parabolic. But you know the trouble with the cable. The cable is always funicular, which means if the loading changes, if the loading changes, let's say I have a heavy concentrated load, I'm taking a heavy vehicle on top, then the bending moment diagram will change in your equivalent simply supported beam. You don't want that to happen, so, so, that means the, the, the profile will keep changing. You understand, you understand what I'm meaning? That you don't want because it will unsettle the whole thing. People will be afraid to walk on that. Some movement is always there in Lakshman Jhula. But you don't want too much of it. You want little moments. So how do you guarantee that the cable profile does not change? It will remain more or less the same as when you built it. 
Huh? You make this stiff. So, infinite is a dangerous word. You can never make anything infinite. Reasonably rigid <laughs> deck. So that's why it's called a stiffening girder. That's why you're giving it depth, but you don't need to make it solid. You can make it open webbed. Right? So, that's what you do. That's why you need a stiffening girder. Why? To stiffen the system so that this remains parabolic. Then, in the middle of that stiffening girder, in the olden days, they used to provide a hinge. Why did they give that hinge? Huh? To make the system statically determinate. We'll see how it can be done. Right? Now, this cable, where is the tension minimum? In the middle. Where is the tension maximum? At the support. Now, you have to take it across and put it on. You have to anchor it in, into hard strata, hard rock. Right? So, this is called the anchorage part. And this will have a constant tension. Right? Now, let me ask you another question. This is a system in which the cable is the main part. But you also have a stiffening girder, you have the suspenders and you have a pylon and you have a foundation and you have this anchored system. Let's take the pylon. How do you design the pylon? Yes? Yeah, predominantly it's going to be pressed down because the tension in this and tension that is going to press it down to the ground. You want it to be in compression. What else will it be subject to? A bit of bending moment, is it? Yeah. What is that bit of bending moment? Where is the bending moment maximum in this cable? At the top or at the bottom? Bottom. It's like a cantilever. Right? How will you get the bending moment? Because of a horizontal shear at the top. How do you get the horizontal shear? Because of? Because of? Because of, give me the correct answer. Because of a difference in the tension here and the tension there. Right? And there may be some friction. Okay. Now, that can be a very expensive thing if this is very long. So, people, and that, that's why you are making it shaped like this because it's a, the bending moment is going to increase as you reach the bottom, right? Now, in, this is true. We, we recently did uh, a cable state bridge with similar problems in West Bengal. And there was a big debate on what, how to reduce this moment. And th so there were two possibilities that you can do. Let me talk about the ideal situation ideal situation. If I want to eliminate any bending in this, what should I do? I don't want any bending moment in this pylon. I want only pure compression. No bending moment, no shear. Huh? You can provide a Pulley. Okay. Let's say I put a pulley on top. And let's say I make it frictionless. If I make a pulley on top, what do I achieve? What do I achieve when I put a pulley on top? I am guaranteeing that the tension here and the tension there is the same. Remember you studied this in school. Uh, regardless of the change in angle. First of all, can you prove it? <laughs> can you prove that in a pulley, the tensions on both sides in an ideal frictionless pulley are the same? How to prove it? I, see, it's always good to go back to school. That's the only place where life is full of fun and joy. So you draw a pulley.
okay and in our ideal system let's say we are arresting this and you've got a cable like this oh everything is black I wanted some change in color let me try this looks green let's hope it's green yes goes like that and let's say it goes like that definitely these two angles are not the same but we are told I mean that's how we solve problems in school no we have we are told that this whatever you call it n1 and n2 are always equal regardless of theta 1 theta 2 why I'm just teasing you. You know the answer is correct. Frictionless pulley. Why is it equal? Hmm? <laughs> answer is correct. Except for the friction, we'll ignore friction. Why is it the same? How many of you have taken water from a well using a pulley? You've done it, remember in the olden days in the villages you would do that. It doesn't matter how you pull it, you'll usually get more or less the same. Now why is it equal? Anyone? Uh -huh. Why? We are, what, how do you prove these things? And we are, okay, don't pull and make it dynamic. Hold it in one position. Can you, is it in static equilibrium? Then you should be able to apply the equation of static equilibrium. Apply equation and tell me how to prove. No, no, don't complicate it. No friction. From this figure, can you prove n1 is equal to n2? Yes, we can take perpendicular to the center and if, the, if it will not equal, there will be movement to the center of the mm -hmm. Okay, let's draw the support reactions. What do you think will be the direction of the support reaction? Support reaction will be something like this. R. And you have a triangle of forces, right? This two, these two angles will be equal. You can intuitively guess that. There will be a vertical component, there will be a horizontal component. The reason why you can say N1 is equal to N2 is very simple. This pulley is circular. So if you take moments about O, sigma MO equal to 0, this radius R is the same as this radius R. Come on, yeah. That's all. Very difficult. Huh? That's all. There are only three forces. This R is passing through it, so it doesn't have a moment. So if you take moments about this point, N1 into R must be equal to N2 into R, which means N1 is equal to N2. Actually, N1 and N2 will have a slight difference because of something called belt friction that you, you may have studied in engineering mechanics. But that's the secondary thing. Got it? Now, where's my friend who said put a pulley? Put a, putting a pulley doesn't help because N2 cos theta minus N1 cos theta will bring a horizontal force, which you can see as a horizontal component of this. This has a vertical component. And that is going to act on top of my pylon that's a shear and I have to design for that bending moment yes or no so pulley is one option but I have to design for moment what is another option where I can avoid designing for moment oh, that angle is uh, how to make it the same see 
what what are the criteria for choosing the angle tell me how do you choose this angle this angle is chosen by practical consideration of how much of depth is feasible remember the golden gate bridge you made it as deep as possible for the large span right so this is beyond your control this if you try to make this equal then you have to enter into san francisco city and you know who's going to pay for it you want to make it as close to the beach as possible isn't it wherever the heart strata is there so this will always be shallow compared to this right in general you want to make it as close to so that it doesn't get into the city so that's also bad suggestion no this class is getting interesting never thought what does the nerd say yes increase no no i want you to think see this is this structural and no it's a structural engineering class i want you to think like an engineer i want to eliminate the horizontal component i don't want it to get transmitted to the vertical pylon that's my objective how do i achieve it hmm can you think of another kind of pulley you have to do not this pulley counter yeah counter weight you can try all that how will count to ah uh? what if we self self anchored suspension right this is the picture we are giving we are going to anchor it here that's what he is talking about give a, a counterweight kind of thing is it no 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 you want to relieve the deck you are changing the system the deck should not take any load deck job is to stiffen it should not take any load the weight of the deck itself is picked up by the cable Uh, the these suspenders are very closely spaced so uh, what do you do to so look at the ingenuity of people who actually thought of solutions how do you release a horizontal force transmitted from one element to the other element what's the way to do it how do you release hmm? sorry roller how do you do that good at least you are thinking in the right direction so this is what we saw the pulley support this is what you do somehow create a roller there a frictionless roller ideally and make the shape like this you know that small thing is also it's like it's called a saddle support you know like in a horse you have a saddle and put it on a roller of course it should not roll too much little bit of movement is possible <coughs> and then you are guaranteeing that that no horizontal force is transmitted here now what happens is you are guaranteeing that the horizontal component of now you are not saying the tension here is equal to the tension there you are saying the horizontal component of the tension here must be equal to the horizontal because this is no longer a circular pulley you can't use this equation so that's how you do it so there are many tricks in fact uh, we usually leave it see a client wants to build this and the designer has to do it designer has to consult the manufacturers of both this system and this system and and usually the same manufacturer can do both and discuss and see which works out to be cheaper because you have to get into the design of the pylon as well okay <laughs> this is something we did in iit many years back i think in 2005 we used to have a festival here called we still have shastra but we had an event every year called the greatest thing in the world and invariably the greatest thing in the world is a civil engineering thing because only big things can be displayed so one on on one occasion we decided to build a bridge using only two materials what are the two materials newspaper and rope 
two main materials. And uh, you roll up a newspaper tightly and you fix, clamp the ends, you know, there are pins available. And you can, we did tests in the structures lab and to see it could take load before it buckles. So make sure that the load is not exceeded. If you put it horizontally, it can take a little bending. Newspaper, it's fairly stiff. And uh, this entire pylon, of course, this is not a suspension bridge. This is a cable stayed bridge. These, this was done behind the, or in front of the central school. And a uh, lot of people came. Morning we started, afternoon the bridge was ready. Not in very good shape, you know, it was not perfectly horizontal and it would move a little bit, but students walked on it, and people walked on it. And uh, the pylon is all made of newspaper, it's tied properly and uh, proper foundations were made and manila rope was used, the deck is made of this. And uh, this, uh, this, I think they tried to get it in the Guinness Book of World Records, they couldn't get it get that but then they got a paper in the AC journal and this team was led by a girl she was a civil engineering student Anita and uh, we had students from all departments taking part and all of them were working together and uh, a great achievement it's called the design and construction of the longest rope stayed newspaper footbridge in the world hmm? so you actually have to do these things to know that they work. Okay. Now let's see how to design a three hinge suspension bridge. The crucial thing is this, not this. This can be as close to the cable as possible. So let's say you have a stiffening girder and you have a large number of closely spaced uh, suspenders. And let's say you have two concentrated loads. 240 kilo and 300 kilo. I'll show you how the presence of a hinge, a deliberate hinge in the middle, makes the whole design statically determined. How do you do that? Let's solve this together. Uh, let's ignore the self weight. The question is can you analyze the system? Now it's a system. So there are two things here. Forget the anchor and all that, let's say it's fixed there. You have to design the cable, you have to analyze the cable and you have to analyze the beam here, the stiffening girder. So a complete analysis would mean you need the maximum tension in the cable because you have to buy the cable. So it has an allowable tensile stress, cross-sectional area, so you need to know the tension. and. This is a simple parabola, so you, you know everything about it. You know the length, everything is known. And you also need to know the shear force and bending moment diagram in the stiffening girder due to these concentrated loads. Right? So, how do you do it? Well, you make an assumption that the load on these suspenders are all going to be equal. How can you make such an assumption? Because, because, because the girder is rigid. No, that's girder rigid means what will happen. No, girder rigid doesn't mean this will be equal. No, 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 no. The reason why you can assume that these forces are equal is simple reason that the shape of this parabola does not change. It remains parabola. And the shape of the parabola does not change because this is assumed to be stiff. So you miss the step in between. Right? Now if you take, look at the, the power of the solution. If you take uh, this free body and you take moments about this point, then the vertical reaction here and the distributed load Q0 here will satisfy this equation. Just see Va dash into 
120, the total, total span is 120, that's a clockwise moment, plus 120 Q0, Q that's this load acting there, into 60, also acting clockwise, minus 240 into this distance, that distance is 95, minus 300 into 40, must be equal to zero. So you can simplify this, you got one equation, all right, from this free body. Then what to do? Because you've got a reaction here, you've got a reaction here, you've got a horizontal, you've got too many things. We are going slowly. Uh, a clever engineer will do the minimum work needed. you got a relationship between V dash A and this. Now, you separate out these two fellows. You've got a cable on top and you know everything about the cable now. Parabolic cable, symmetric cable. If you know the sag and you know the load, you know everything. So cable is no problem once you know Q0. You have to get Q0. If you get Q0, everything can be solved. To get Q0, you have to focus your attention on the stiffening girder. And the key in the stiffening girder is the fact that you put a hinge at the middle. So you can separate out the two parts and you can say the bending moment at C is zero. Now you go back to this and invoke mc dash equal to zero and write an equation. mc, look at this free body, mc dash is zero, so va dash, the same va dash that is acting there, into 60, which is this length, remember 25 plus 35 is 60, plus, because q naught is going to act up for the beam and down for the cable, right? So it's also in the same direction, plus 60 Q naught, 60 is the span here, into the centroid, the CG will act in the middle into 30, minus 240 into 35 must be equal to zero because the bending moment here is zero. You get another equation. Look at this, two equation having two unknowns, VA dash and Q naught. That's the minimum work you need to do. So what do you get? You can solve these two equations and in a jiffy, you get Q0 and you get VA dash. And interestingly, VA dash is a small value, but it's negative, it goes down, and Q0 is five kilonewton per meter. Now, if, if this is five kilonewton per meter and the total load is, Q0 is five, five into 120, how much is the load? 600. Okay, you, you take, and you've got this 240 and 300, so if you add up everything, 240 and 300 and subtract, you get VB dash is minus 50. So you've got VA dash, you've got VB dash, right? This is simply supported, so there's no horizontal reaction here. Now, focus your attention on the cable. The cable, you know, once you know the sag, you can find the horizontal tension, which is Q0 L squared by 8H. You already know that H is 12 meter, Q0 is cracked as 5 kilonewton per meter, so you can get this. And the maximum cable tension will be always at the support, and this VA you can get is Q0 into L by 2. So you can get this and get the, and then you can buy the cable. So see how powerful this is. Cable is done. And all because you made two assumptions. One, you assume that because the parabola remains a parabola because of adequate stiffness in this beam, the Q is changing. In reality, you can assume Q to change and still solve it, but that's more complicated. You have to bring in the uh, actual stiffnesses of everything and the flexural stiffness, and then you can still solve it, but it becomes highly statically indeterminate. And in the olden days, they didn't know how to solve statically indeterminate problems. And they said, we want to do it. And they built. But their guesses were very good. And so this is how they did it. Now it's very interesting to, and this is a good test, how we've already finished beams. Can you draw the shear force and bending moment diagram of that stiffening girder? Yes. So if you take the stiffening girder, you have, you start with VA dash as minus 10, 
then this Q0 keeps building it up. You multiply this 5 kilonewton per meter into 25, you get 5 into 25 is 125, but you have to subtract 10, so you hit 115. Then there's a plunge downward by 240, so you go down to 125. And then again with the same slope, 5 kilonewton per meter is the slope, you again build it up till you hit the next point and that will be 55 into 5 and then you find you hit 150 then again there's a plunge of 300 so 150 it goes down again it goes up and you'll find this matches exactly with vb dash is minus 50. so you must learn how to draw the shear force diagram once you have the free body of this and you know all the values you know the support reactions you know the distributed load so this really this problem tests your understanding of beams which you should have learned by now it's not difficult and the more interesting thing is to draw the bending moment diagram you have a distributed load so you'll always have a parabolic kind of diagram but you'll have a it you'll have alternating from hogging to sagging to hogging to sagging to hogging and you can see here the points of contraflexion are changing wherever you have a zero moment a change in shear force, zero shear force, you have a peak moment and you can always calculate uh, where that peak moment is and you have to design the stiffening girder for these bending moments. Yes or no? Well, that's how uh, structural analysis is done by hand using the brain and using only equilibrium. Let's do a couple of more problems okay now you are given a horizontal bar of length l and total weight w with closely spaced vertical suspenders it is hung from a cable and we have drawn the shape of the cable what is the shape of the cable how do you get the shape of the cable it must match the bending moment diagram in a simply supported beam with a UDL like this. So obviously this part will be straight. Why will it be straight? Because there is no bending moment in the... There is bending moment. I have no... I no... No what? No what? Why will this be straight? Simple question. No vertical force. Because there is no shear force. Because there is shear force. Variation constant. There is constant shear force. What's the correct term? There is no what? No dash. You fill in the blank. No moment is wrong answer. No shear force is wrong answer. Both wrong. Curvature. Wherever there is bending moment, there is curvature. Wrong. All wrong answers. IIT students consistently giving wrong answers. No what? No load. <laughs> there is no intermediate load in that region. Simple answer. <laughs> it's because there is no load that you have a constant shear. It's because you have a constant shear that you have a linear bending moment diagram. Which means the curvature is not zero, curvature is also linear. Okay. Not constant, linear. Hmm. Alright, so you first this will not be given to you. This is given to you by me. In the problem only this you will get. So you have to first draw this correctly and you are told that sag at the cable at the middle is E. And uh, so vertically above B is L by 3. So location E vertically above, where is B? Above B is L by 3. Got it? With this information, okay, you do it. Can you get the horizontal tension? No, you are in tension. Get the horizontal tension. Remember, we began the class by getting horizontal tension in a symmetric cable. How did we get that? How do you get horizontal tension? by you know the bending moment diagram 
of a equivalence empty support beam. The cable profile will be such that at all points you get a hogging moment which neutralizes the bending moment. So the sag of the cable at any location is the bending moment divided by capital H. If you know the sag anywhere and you know the sag in the middle, then you can get capital H, quickly get it. First of all, can you get the vertical reaction at C and D? Quickly tell me what's the vertical reaction at C, what's the vertical? This total weight W, how will it be shared? Huh? You tell me, total weight is W, how much goes here, how much goes there? Don't do any big calculation, one look and you should tell me, boy or girl. Ah, like that. This is W. It will act in the middle here. So, at L by 2. This, so, the, it will divide this pan in the ratio 1 is to 3. So, this reaction will be more than this and this will be 3 fourth of W. This will be 1 fourth of W. That's how you get it fast. Now, capital H. Moment at E. Free bending moment at E. How much is that moment at E? Which free body will you take? Will you take this free body or this free body? Right side. Why? No load. <laughs> when there is no load, your brain also will have no load. You can draw a free body. Quickly tell me what is capital H. What is the moment at E from this side due to VD? VD into L. What is VD? W by 4. Quickly tell me what is capital H. Huh? 3 W by 4. M E is equal to 0. Take that free body. 3 W by 4. Right? Now tell me what is the maximum cable tension. It is usually at the support. Will it be at this support or this support? Left support because this V is more than this V. How much will it be? This is 3W by 4, this is 3W by 4. So, what's the answer? Okay, you can write root 2 times 3W by 4, you can write something. I'll ask you just off the cuff. When you, is this a good sketch? That's the first comment I made when this was drawn. Is this looking to scale more or less? How do you know? Can you comment from the slope? Is it, is it okay? Is it well drawn? Is it an engineer's drawing or a, or a, a good engineer's drawing or a bad engineer's drawing? It's a good drawing. Why? First of all, this angle is more than this angle. Secondly, this angle will be exactly equal to 45 degrees. Why it took so long? Why will it be 45 degrees? This and this are exactly equal. So it looks decent. Okay, you don't need to take a protractor and check and all, but more or less you can. that's how engineers draw. Good. Now next question: What's the maximum cable tension? We got it. What's the maximum sag? That means you have to find out the lowest point quickly. How to get? Oh, now what to do? And don't tell me I have to look at some formula and all. Common sense. How to get O? Maximum bending moment. How do you get maximum bending moment? Next question. You are right. It must be maximum bending moment. How do you get maximum bending moment? Shear force should be zero. You are right. Can you draw the shear force diagram in the equivalent beam? What will it look like? Try. It will look like this. So you need to find out where the shear force is changing sign. So, if you take a free body of CO, the shear force is 0, where you have to divide 3W by 4 divided by Q0. So, divide 3W by 4 by W by L and you get X, 3L by 4. So, you have located where you are getting the 
maximum bending moment in your equivalent beam, which is also coincidentally the location of O. Now the next job is how to get HO. Maximum sag is HO. How will you get HO? Yeah. Bending moment there is zero. So you take the same free body. So you can take the same free body, HO equals zero. Find the bending moment there. Take this reaction, this distance. You already know the distance. Work it out and divide it by capital H. You will get HO 3L by 8. That's it. Nice problem to give. Huh? Which simply tests your equilibrium concepts. Very simple. Is it clear? Okay. I think we asked this question in one of the quizzes uh, for our BTEC students. Okay. Okay, we will. I think we'll ask that trick question. We'll end by asking you a trick question. Huh? Okay. But I want to end on a happy note. Let's see. I am told, someone asked me this question the other day. They say these are the questions they sometimes ask in interviews for companies like Amazon. I'm not sure if it's Amazon, but no harm asking this question. Now, who write, uh, are they structural engineers who write, apply for Amazon? Of course, you guys also apply for Amazon, but uh, this is meant for everybody. The question asked is this, hmm? interview question. You have a cable 80 meters long. And you are given the heights of these poles. It's relevant to all that we discussed today. And the heights of the pole are 250 meter high pole. And you are given how much the lowest point is above the base, 10 meters. And this cable is 80 meters long. The question is this, what is the length between the two poles if the hanging cable is 80 meters long and the poles are 50 meters tall and the distance between the hanging cable and the ground is 10 meters. This catch is not given, only this is given. And you've got three minutes to answer. So if you are a good student who have attended all the classes, you will say, okay, this is some formula for the length. But tell me when you go for the interview, who will remember all these formulas? If you want to be very accurate and say, this is not parabola, it's actually catenary. It's a topic we'll study in the next class. Then you have an even more difficult equation to worry about. But my suggestion is don't break your head with all this. Use your brain, which has not been used for a long time. The right brain you have to use along with the left brain. Two more minutes. To always use, never lose your common sense. Obviously, Amazon does not expect all the people, their job is to buy and sell and con customers to get things and make things available. Then you understand, they have to quickly deal with, so they don't expect you to know cable formulas and all that, but they expect you to have common sense, right? So tell me. First you have to see with your eyes, right brain. See, can you guess the answer at least? 70 meters. 70 meters. Okay, bad guess. 65. 65, wonderful, even worse. 50 meters, meter. wrong. <laughs> None of you will get a job in Amazon. I don't know if it's really, it's an Amazon interview question, but all your guesses are very bad. You have bad eyes. 40 meters, okay. Bad answer, yes. Huh? Again, if I tell you the answer, you would put your hand like this. Ayyo. How stupid can you be? You'll see there's a, no limit to stupidity, yes. Okay, let me give you the answer. Ah, now only the tube light is working, okay. 
Look at this. This is 80 meters long. So, what is this is a question. Right? What is this? If this, this is 50 and this is 10, what will this be? 40. Now, let's cut the cable here and let it hang. We'll join it later in our mind. Let it hang. Okay, so it will hang at the bottom here. This is not drawn to scale because most people are very bad in drawing to scale. So this we do typically what most people draw. They will draw like this. This is 40. Actually, it's not to scale. 40. So on this side also you will have 40. And this half is also already 40. Right? Now you have to, let's say this is a, this is C. These two C's you have to join back. Okay, join them back. So now what's the distance? Answer is 0 meters. Okay. 0 meters is the answer. And you get the job. Okay. Good. We'll stop here. Thank you. So once in a while you should have such questions also, you know, so that uh, you realize that you don't need to know too much, but you need to think clearly. Okay. Bye.